So one of the problems you can run into when trying to render objects in Blender is that sometimes your objects look like they're floating on different surfaces, meaning that the way that they're sitting on surfaces just doesn't look very realistic. We're gonna check out a node inside of Blender that can make these intersections between objects look a lot more realistic. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so if you look at the way this cube is sitting on this ground plane right now, one thing you might notice is while the shadow looks fairly realistic, meaning that the light is casting a shadow on the back side, if you look at the front side of this object and the way it's facing on the ground, it just kind of looks like it's floating here, right? So basically it looks like it's set on the ground, but this intersection just doesn't look very realistic. It's just kind of a straight line right here. So the reason for this is if you look at buildings like this in the real world, notice how there's just this kind of like uh, where, where the building meets the ground, there's usually like dust and dirt and grime and other things that kind of build up in here. That's what make these objects look realistic, right? Like the wind blows and things like build up around the edges of your objects right here. So you can see how it looks a lot rougher in here in this image. However, if we jump back and look at this, this is just completely smooth, right? And so one of the things we can do with this is we can use a node um, called the ambient occlusion node in order to add um, kind of a grimy look in here, or at least kind of a shadow where these two objects meet. So the ambient occlusion node is a node that basically computes the distance between different objects inside a blender, and it basically adds weathering effects or a darker color to those intersections. So what we wanna do in this situation is we wanna go ahead and set up our shader so that it has ambient occlusion inside a blender. So let's go ahead and jump over into the shader tab right here. And what we wanna do is we want to take this object and we wanna add some ambient occlusion to it. And so what we can do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do a shift A and we're gonna add an ambient occlusion node right here. And so at the moment, let's say that we were to take the ambient occlusion out of that node and drag it into this box right here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and unplug my principal BSDF shader for a second. And what I wanna do is I want to go over into my EV rendering settings. I wanna make sure that I've checked the box for ambient occlusion. And so notice how as soon as I check the box for ambient occlusion with, um, with this node plugged in here, I start getting this little shaded value right here. One thing to note about this is, let's say I was to tab into edit mode, split this object up real quick. So I'm just gonna take this face and extrude it and then tab back into edit mode. Notice how I'm, or tab back into object mode. Notice how I'm also getting ambient occlusion at this intersection right here. And so we can adjust this so that the ambient occlusion value goes further away from the intersection. But notice how you can't really see this very well. So what I'm gonna do so that we can see this a little bit better is I'm gonna use a color ramp node to intensify the value. I'm just gonna do a shift A and I'm gonna add a color ramp node right here. We'll go ahead and plug this in. So what that's gonna allow us to do is that's gonna allow us to plug our ambient occlusion into our factor, but then we can take the color ramp values and play with them so you get a more pronounced effect. So notice how you can affect how hard this falls off as well as how dark the darks are by adjusting this value right here. So between using the color ramp node and using the distance function, you can significantly affect the way that this shows up inside of your rendering right here. And notice how if I was to move this up, now I'm only getting the ambient occlusion right here. That's because this is measuring the distance between my objects and applying that ambient occlusion value based on that distance. So notice how if I move this down, I do get that ambient occlusion that's in here like this. All right, so now though, let's take a look at how we can use this in order to affect our values in here. Because right now what we've done, right, is we've basically just broken our shader and just plugged our ambient occlusion directly into the surface. However, notice how when I put this brick material in here, so if I drag this back in my surface like this, we're no longer going to get that result that we wanted anymore. I'm gonna drag my displacement back in here. So the ambient occlusion is no longer doing anything. All right, so what we wanna do is we wanna mix these two things together, right? Um, because we want a darker material along the edges and then a lighter material everywhere else. So the way that we can do that is we can do a shift A and we can add a mix shader right here. So I'm just gonna drag that down here. First thing I wanna do is I wanna drag the BSDF from my brick shader in here and then I wanna drag this into my surface. So right now nothing has changed, right? So I can adjust this so I either have like a complete dark because I don't have anything plugged into this first shader or I can drag it all the way to the right and it's just a brick material. All right, so now, what we wanna do is we wanna take the color from our ambient occlusion node and we wanna drag that into our factor. And so what that's gonna do is notice how that gives us this dark material right here. 
um, wherever the ambient occlusion is being calculated. And then you can come in here and you can adjust things like the distance to set like how far up or down that's going to go, as well as adjusting the color ramp node in order to set kind of where that's going to go and the contrast between the two, like this. So you can use this in order to quickly add that occlusion in here. And so one thing I don't like about this is it's not necessarily giving me a ton of control over the color that's being applied in here. But what you could do instead of messing around with this, um, which is going to affect more like where the effect happens, you could also add like a diffuse BSDF. So if I was to add a diffuse right here and plug that into my mix shader. So now I've got my factor, I've got my shader, and then I've got my other shader. Well, what you can do is you can adjust the colors in here. So I could like darken this down. I could also kind of like make it align with my brick material. Um, so I could actually use the color picker in order to do that. I could pick a brick material in here and just kind of like play around with it. But you can use that in order to more customize where this occurs. All right, so then the other thing you can do is you could actually use this in order to start combining um, different materials together. So let's say for example that we had like this metal material right here, so nothing special about it. But what I wanna do is I want to um, add an ambient occlusion node right here. I'm gonna add a color ramp node right here so I can control the strength of the effect that's created. And then I'm gonna create a mix shader. So I'm gonna add a mix shader right here. And we want our metal material to be on the bottom. Notice how right now, right, if we drag this, we're gonna get either our metal material or nothing at the moment, but we're gonna drag our mix shader or our color ramp into our mix shader right here. Um, that's gonna give us our ambient occlusion. So notice how we can kind of adjust that right here. But here, we wanna add another material. So in this case, um, I'm just going to add a principal BSDF. And I have a rusty metal material that I'm gonna set up. So I just did a control shift T with node wrangler in order to set that up. Set that up. But then I'm going to drag my BSDF out of that rusty metal material into my shader right here. And so notice how what that's gonna do is that's gonna give me that rusty material around the edges here. And so there's some things I need to adjust. First off, that material is driven by the color that I give it. So notice how I can drag this um, in order to give it kind of a redder or an oranger color right here. But then notice how if I adjust things like my distance, that material is starting to show up only around my edges. So you can use this in order to apply like rust and wear and other things like that around edges where your objects kind of intersect together like this. So, and we can adjust the strength of that by using our color ramp right here. So notice how if I really crank that up, things start getting weird, but you can use that color ramp in order to control the way that the transition between those different objects happens. So you can also adjust that size of that right here. And so one last thing you might consider is notice how we're getting the ambient occlusion on like our brick surface, for example, right here, but we're not really getting anything on the ground, right? The ground looks really clean. So what you might think about doing is you might think about also going into your shader editor and adding an ambient occlusion to your actual ground plane as well, just to get that little extra shadow in here. And that's not really hard to do. You just do the same thing where you just add that ambient occlusion, you add your color ramp, then you add your mix shader. And maybe for this one, we'll just add a simple diffuse BSDF just so we can select a color in here. But then we can set our color to something dark, like a gray or something like that. And we can just adjust this so that we get a little bit of a shadow coming out on our edges right here. So that way it just looks like there's a little bit of grunge on the ground as well as around our object like this. So if you have any questions about this, leave a comment down below. Um, we can talk more about this node in the future if you guys are interested. I will link to some other Blender Material node tutorials on this page as well. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.